I saw all three. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's share. All right, so the plan is uh, lesson seven from the current unit. And we put it off a little bit because it's not only, I think, more complicated and more advanced than what we've done before, but it's also a little convoluted. And I think I showed you this before. So lesson seven, more conditionals practice, has three, excuse me, four different bubbles, but it really has three different projects, okay? And the projects are not, or the bubbles are not for each project. Well, each bubble is for a different st stage for each of the three uh, projects, um, where like bubble three for, you know, project A is make the variables, bubble three, for part three, for the uh, code quiz is, um, you know, declare variables and so on. And it's the same workspace all the way across the bubbles for each of the three. And considering that's the best that I can explain it, you can tell that it's, um, like I said, a little convoluted. But... For now, the only one we are going to do is the emoji quiz, which uh, is the least spicy of the three. I don't know if we need a new term for difficulty, but that's fine. Okay, so for the emoji app, which is the only one that we're going to do for now, I know in the past I've said that we will always do all of them. The problem is these aren't like, three different small things. They're like three different full lesson practices. And if we have time at the end of the semester, then we'll do one more of them maybe. But for now, we're just going to do the emoji quiz. So go ahead and find your way, like I said, to current unit lesson seven, bubble one, and then Project A, the Emoji Quiz app. And you can, you'll see what our final goal is going to be. And I think I already have one of these up. Let's go, let's get rid of this and move this one over. And when you get there, it should look like this. Okay, so this is the app we're gonna make. You can play around with it for a second or for a minute or two, it is a quiz-based app. And four separate times, the user will be presented with a pair of emojis that they are supposed to guess what movie those are representing, okay? They're not always gonna be literal translations like Batman. Um, you can do your best to guess what they are. And after the four questions, I guess you would call them, You it switches to the results screen where all of the correct ones are, or all the results are listed with either thumb up or thumb down, okay? And then some sort of affirmation message and a reset button, okay? The reset button, you'll see if you go through it twice, it completely wipes the previous um, players round, which oops, the um, just how in the past where the rule, the mandate was no dead ends, um, you know, where a, a user needs to be able to get back to the beginning and restart the app without actually hitting the reset button in App Lab. So too do any sort of quiz or game apps need to be able to go back to the beginning and have all the scores and everything reset so the user can use it um, multiple times without having to hit reset. Now, if we go ahead to uh, bubble 2A, and you will see all of the code that you get for free. Okay, 
Um, this, there we go. Um, you, we get here and just a quick scroll through, you'll see we get a ton of stuff for free. Okay, the reset button that resets all of the inputs and resets the score and resets the turn and changes the screen back to title screen. That one is done. Okay, the start button that switches to the quiz screen and um, sets the text for the first question. That one is done. Uh, you can see here, the set screen is for the quiz screen, where if you go to, to design mode, you can see there are only three screens, or rather, I guess, either one of them. Design mode has, you can see quiz screen, results scene, screen, uh, title screen, um, and then this is where you'd add or import. But in code mode, it only shows what's there. The There is a tendency for students when they get the tool of new screen and set screen being able to change things to a new screen, uh, there's a tendency for students to rely on that and have every new thing on a new screen, which can work, but it's a lot more work because if you are doing this app and you have the first question on quiz screen one and the second question, oh, I need to go to the one that actually works. Um, if you have the first quiz, the first question on quiz screen one, and the second question on quiz screen two, and the third question, you need to recreate everything here. And the submit button, even if you made it exactly identically on another screen, it would be a different button. And you'd have to program for that button even if you made it exactly the same location size, everything. Um, so that would be a lot more work. The way this is done and is easier is to have a single quiz screen where the different components change as the program goes. So you only would need to um, change the, you know, the question, and then you can still use the submit button and the text input as your, um, your tools, and that's what's happening here. So you can see we only have a single quiz screen, which is where the input and the button are, uh, the text input. And this is where we are gonna set the um, questions, okay? So the first step is coming up with your questions and you get one for free. The, is everything frozen? The Batman, Emojis and the Batman answer are done. You need to come up, and this is like kind of a fun creative part, um, original combinations of emojis that are the clue for some question or, um, of a movie name. Okay, first thing you're going to do is you can keep Batman, yes. Um, so you need at least three. Even though it says please update, it's fine. I'm not terribly concerned about this. First thing we need to do is change our variable declaring or declaration uh, blocks to uh, declare and initialize blocks so that we have an initial value. But there's a shortcut or a trick here. Um, instead of bringing out a new one for each question, you can go to the end of the um where you're typing in the name of the question and do space equals space and then open close quotes and it will switch it. You can also do that in text mode. The spaces on either side of the equal sign are just there uh, to make it easier to read. They don't change any of the programming. So you're gonna do this for all three, uh, well, for questions two through four, okay? Open close quotes just makes it a string where we will be able to add things in in a second. Okay, so you can do this for all three questions and all three answers. And when you go back to block mode, or like I said, you could do it in block mode. This is what it should look like. Now, we need to come up, or you need to come up with three more questions using emojis and the way to do that, the easiest way to do that, 
is to go up to the instructions up here and it says, how do I insert emojis? Well, depending on the platform you're working on, there are different key combinations to bring up the emoji inserter. Uh, for Mac, it's uh, control command spacebar. For Chromebook, it's ser search shift spacebar. And for PC, it's Windows key period. And when your cursor is where you want to have the emoji go, you press that. In my case, it is uh, Windows key period. And uh, to just type the word of a thing that you want. And you can see I type moon. If I click on the emoji I want, it replaces the word with the um, emoji. Okay, that's the idea. And so take, um, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Where's my timer? Um, I mean, I really want to get through this. We can come back to it at the end. Let's say seven minutes. Okay, seven minutes to come up with your um, emojis and um answer combinations the answers do need to be all caps because we're going to do our little two uppercase trick so that the user doesn't have to worry about case sensitivity unfortunately we at this stage of course it's possible but at this stage it's difficult for us to decide you know if they don't type the but the answer has a the in it to make sure that they get credit for it. Uh, that's really difficult to do. Well, where we are right now, it's pretty difficult. The We're just gonna have to live with that, but we can make it easier for them if we do all caps. So um, go ahead and do that over the next six minutes. If you don't love the ones that you um, that you choose, that's fine, you come back and change them. We just need something there to populate the text area when we're programming it. All right, a few more minutes and go. Well, four, a few more minutes and we will keep going. All right, uh, just a second. The You'll notice as you scroll through that there are these weird artifacts at like in various places in the program, these like extra uh, comment blocks. Feel free and please go ahead and get rid of those. It has to do with the way that they uh, import their text from a another text editor. And it'd be nice if they cleaned it up. There's a, a different way to clean it up with like shift tab and changing the text, which if you are interested in that. Um, so hopefully, you know, tab goes tab forward. Shift tab is the opposite of a tab. If you do control A and shift tab, everything will go back. 
backwards. And then when you switch it back to block mode, it should be fine, hopefully. Um, and that's one way to get rid of them other than grabbing and yanking them out of the way. Um, as far as these other comments, how they're on like two lines and it's kind of gross, the, um, the, there's not much to do about that other than going into text mode and rearranging it. I would get it to work first and then go through like at the end. It's not a bad idea. All right. So right now, wherever you are, um, project wise, let's keep going. Okay. So first, if we look at the um, instructions up here, you can see it says step one, even though we're bubble two there with this project or with this, um, lesson in the student resources um, block, which you don't need to go to. I'm showing you this thing, uh, which we almost never use because this is the place where you get like Google Docs and other documents for this uh, for code. Uh, I will always provide the ones that you need um, and edited for our purposes. And so that's this one, the Emoji Quiz app. Okay, you can open it. You don't really need to there, like you don't need to make a copy or anything um, because there's nothing, there's no deliverables. It's just the guideline. And uh, you could see that they have their, their number uh, sort of step number here in the blue numbers, which I like. I like that is actually an emoji for a number two emoji. Uh, 
but they are putting them on different bubbles, whatever. Uh, just to be sure, um, I want to make sure that this, the step two, uh, which is bubble three, of course, is, um, where's mine? This one. Um, once you have your questions and answers, um, let's do finish. And we aren't going to do this for every bubble because at a certain point they are, I mean, it's the same project on all of the bubbles. Your work carries through. So it's not absolutely necessary that um, we go to bubble three. And I don't know why it went back there. Uh, but it would be bubble three A. And you can see I'm really frustrated with the way they set up their um, like sub puzzles. It makes it unnecessarily complicated. But either way, we are done with step one bubble two for the emoji quiz and just to be sure we'll go to bubble three for the emoji quiz and look at the instructions here and the instructions here for bubble three appear to be identical so that means this one uh step two if else if else yeah okay so the instructions on this document um like bubble three the instructions for that one which is really step two are the same things as what's written up here so we are just going to ignore this location for the instructions do all the work in any one of the bubbles and get our identical instructions from here okay after all of that uh so we need to go to the on event, look at the submit button, and um, they have already created user guests. And uh, let's put this down here, and this over there, and this right there. They have already created variables for uh, user guests and correct answer. And let's take a look at what we have. So we already have score, turn, uh, final message, and I don't know what goes here. Probably do some sort of results. Uh, score and turn, and really almost everything in this case does need to be global because we have other functions using it. Okay, if you want the reset button function or event handler to be able to reset things when they click the reset button, these variables need to be global because we're using them there and here, which are two separate function definitions. Okay, we do have the use of local variables just because they're only going to be ever used inside of this one function definition or event handler. And we get a um, sort of, I guess, temporary uh, variable for user guess, which is getting the text from the quiz screen and putting it into a variable called user guess. We are going to switch it to uh, eliminate the case sensitivity first so we don't have to worry about it later. The way we're going to do that is, so we have this variable user guess, and it's local, but we want to reassign it, okay? Make sure you don't bring out var again. Even though this is a local variable inside of the function, we still only ever use var once for any uh, variable. So we have at the end of my line 40, which um, it's probably worth your time to keep your line numbers lined up with my line numbers just for the sake of debugging and also me helping you debug. So we have on line 40, we have the program going and getting the text from the user guest text input. And then on 41, we are going to reassign that variable to user guess will now get whatever it used to be dot to upper case, open close parentheses. Okay, the U and C need to be capitalized and you need to have the um, open close parentheses at the end. And when you click off, it should look like this. Um, if you mess something up like 
this, it's probably going to get angry. Yeah, it doesn't know what to do with that. So um, if you don't, if it doesn't come out exactly, it means you probably type something wrong. Let's see what happens if we go back. Does it keep it green? Oh, okay, excellent. We aren't going to do a console log test check to see if it makes it to all uppercase like we did before because the rest of this code isn't going to run yet. There's too many uh, unanswered conditionals that it would give an error for, I think. Let's see here. Do we go? Oh, I'm surprised it doesn't break. Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, it does break eventually. All right. So what are the next steps? We are really only on step two. Okay, find the on event portion of the code and user clicks the sub submit button. That is the majority of the program is that submit button. And what do we want to do every time that they click it? So um, the value of user guess is a get text. Um, and correct answer is going to be a um, user or a local variable that is just there to collect what the correct answer is okay so correct answer is just this variable that's going to change or going to be assigned whichever the correct answer is based on what turn it is okay if turn is one correct answer gets whatever answer one is gets that string and hopefully you can infer whatever uh the other ones Okay, if turn double equals two, then correct answer gets answer two. And if turn double equals three, correct answer gets answer three. Otherwise, correct answer gets answer four. Now, we could... You could have a, you know, else if turn equals four, correct four, but we don't need to because our game will do a game over situation if the answer is um, four, or if the turn is four, we'll do a game over. So there's no scenario where it's never gonna, where it's ever gonna get past this else or, um, need to get past that else okay and let's see what else we've got all right create an if else if uh the value of answer one two three four gets assigned to correct answer okay two uppercase um yeah so you could put two uppercase a few different places um like correct answer to uppercase or answer whichever but we've because we've put all of our correct answers in or all of our answers in uppercase and before we do anything we're converting the user's text to uppercase we don't really have to do it anywhere else um okay you can find the location and start code number two keeping score okay create an if else where we check against check the user's guess against the correct answer and um we are going to create a result screen string um the variable at the end of the game okay so we need hold on a second let's go like this um whatever let's fumble through it Okay, so this is our, um, where do we do? Reset, code the conditional below, update the question. Is that really step two? Why would step three be that and step two be this? Um, did I delete something I was supposed to have? Hold on. Give me a second. Uh, 
code your condition to update the score variable. Uh, code your condition purpose to um, Okay, so this is updating the turn based on, or updating the text based on the turn. Um, so, but we need to do that after we are checking. So if we are checking, we need to check the, whether or not they got it right, and then update score and uh, code your uh, create a unique final message. Um, update turn, update the question displayed. Yeah, we need to check if they have done the correct answer before we change the screen. And I'm really not sure if this is the order they want to do it, but just think about the logical step. Okay, we gather information, we or gather the input from the user. We decide what the correct answer is based on the turn. And based on that, we need a uh, we need the ability to check which um, is correct. Okay. Um, although we can do some debugging if we do the turn thing first. All right. So let's do this one first. Change my mind. Okay. If turn is one, then turn gets turn plus one, meaning it turns into two. Okay, so we need this for the rest of them. Turn, well, hmm. we don't really need turn gets turn plus one every time. There's a better way to do it, but we'll just do it this way. Okay, so if turn gets, well, if turn is one, meaning it's the first turn, we need turn to go up by two, so the next time around turn is two. And we're going to set this text of the text thing to question two. Okay. If turn double equals two, we need the same things. Except if it's two, we want to set it to the next one. And if turn double equals three, we want to set it to question four. And once again, if it makes it all the way down to past turns one, two, and three, oh, I forgot to do the um, update. We need uh, update turn. I hate the way they do these uh, comments. Okay, we need update turn on each of them also, uh, or like increase turn each time and we don't need it on the last one because if it's three it turns to four and next time around turn is four which means it'll all get all the way down to this else which is the result screen okay so i think actually some of this might work at this point maybe maybe not okay first one next one okay so it is working and it's going to uh, gets to the result screen and the reset button works already. So that was probably a good thing to do in order. Um, we can change, you can change the things later if you don't like them. But at this point, your app should be able to work through all four of your combinations. And you can do three if you want, but again, we'll fix that later. It should go back to the result screen and you should be able to get back to the beginning. Okay, so that was step two. Why not do these in order? What is step three? Do we already do step three? Uh, I guess step three is the getting the correct answer. Okay, step four, we need to check if it's right. I think that's what we're doing for step four. Um, is it over? Is this bubble three or bubble four? User guess. Oh, no, the correct thing. I don't know if these line up anymore. Uh, step two, screen and update. Okay, so that's updating. Five is your final message. Um, step four, code your 
Okay, so um, code your conditional below, update the score variable. What are we supposed to do if that is that? Score, um, turn. How do you get the thumbs up? Hold on, does their example even work? Oh, wow, that's not even that. Okay. So, oh, I know why that's the case. <sighs> Actually, I changed my mind. I don't know that, why that's the case. Okay, so we need, let's just work through this logically. I think the the instructions are a little bit wonky, obviously. Um, so... What was the rest of three? Print evaluates the user guess. Um, okay, so we need to check if it's correct. So we have, this is what chooses what the co uh, correct thing is. Um, we need to actually check for it. And let's see. Um, okay, if correct um, user guess double equals correct answer. S W E R. Then we need a uh, score is going to go up by one. They get a point. Okay. Score gets score plus one with no var. And um, do we need an else for this to work? This is not working. I need to go back to the way I built it before. And um, score gets score plus one. I want to do the thumbs up thing, and thumbs up, thumbs down would be at this point where we're checking. All right. Um, Let's go up, we need a results string that's gonna be sort of this running combination of the number, the question number, the, is this my number one? The question number, the um, correct answer, and either a thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, so this, all of this, is one string where first we're going to add question number followed by a period space followed by the correct answer followed by thumbs up or thumbs down oh, that's weird based on whether they got it correct and let's do that um let's make a new well this variable called your code here um doesn't we don't really need it let's just call it result uh string space plus space open close parentheses so that we have a place to put things and let's do um Score, get score plus one. Let's have our running string of whether they got it correct here. Okay, so our running string, what do we need? Okay, so we need either a thumb up or thumb down thing, and this is where we're gonna receive it, whether we get it uh, correct or incorrect. So let's make it, do we even need to declare the variable? Let's just make a variable called uh, 
bum. And we'll make that an empty string. Okay, and if they get it right, then bum gets, um, we want the thumbs up thing. Let's just do uh, thumb up and else we want thumbs down or thumb down. And then um, we can use this variable in our long concatenation. We're going to concat a bunch of things. And so if turn, turn goes up by one, setting the question, uh, final message, result text is score, result, um, result message is final message. What do they call the final message? Results text. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, so we have a variable thumb that based on, okay, if user guess is correct answer, uh, we have the score go up by one. We use that later to decide if they did a good job. And then um, thumb up or thumb down. And this is where we can have our running string of the result. Okay, so what is the result? The result starts out with an empty string. Uh, I'm here on like line 60 something. Yeah, 67. Okay, result string, it starts out an empty string, but after the first turn, we're gonna add some things. Uh, the question number, the, um, or the turn number, the, you know, uh, the correct answer and the current value of thumb. But the next time through, we don't want to replace result string. We want to add it to the end. So result string is going to get result string so that it's always concatting, followed by uh, what do we want first? We want turn. OK, so we're, we haven't updated turn yet. So turn is still the whatever turn it is. It's not the next one yet. The, the variable turn is still whatever it is, followed by, we need a period and a space. So uh, quote, period, space, followed by, every time I say followed by, it's plus, um, correct answer. And I want a space between um between the word correct answer and the thumb up or thumb down so open quote space close quote followed by whatever thumb is either thumb up or thumb down followed by a new line so open quote backslash and close quote and then that's what's getting put into result string after the first turn. In the second turn, what's getting put into it is whatever was in the first turn, followed by the correctness or the other stuff for the second turn. Those get combined, and the next time through, it keeps just adding on to the end. Okay, and so result string is our output. For the sake of debugging, we can go ahead and do a set text. Let's do result screen. This, oh, no, no. Yeah, the result screen is called result text. So we need a set text. We need to set the text of. Um, Results, I already forgot it. Um, why is it not? Oh, my thing's frozen. Result text, the uh, design element called result text is going to get whatever the final thing of result string is after the fourth one, not in quotes. And there's a chance this works now with all four thumbs down. 
Hey, yeah, there we go. Okay. We'll put a pause here to make sure everyone's caught up. Um, just like for a few minutes. If your app does not do this, where you go through all four of your questions and goes to the results screen with the names of your movies, the answer or the turn number, and either thumbs up or thumbs down, um, let's make that happen. I can uh, help you debug at this point, but I don't want to get so far that... Um, you know, you're, you're lost going forward. Um, it's so weird that we can't get a result that works. Okay. Is anybody having trouble making the, I mean, I can look at your, your app from here and we can just figure out the bug. Um, find it unlikely that everybody has it at this stage. All right. Well, we'll keep moving though because everyone has it. And what's up? Uh, while you're waiting, go ahead and see if you can figure out where and how you would uh, reset result string for the next turn. Okay, if I know this, um, you're using result string. Um, I declared it up here quickly, quietly, right there. That should say result string because um, I don't think we end up using anything here. So I just went ahead and uh made um result string look and, like that and then should we uh did you define correct answer too then like, um correct answer is declared here and oh, then I just it. each of the Never mind. that was my issue okay happens all the time oh wait no there's still an issue Um, I, I fixed the task first. You fixed the what? Sometimes it's just fresh eyes. All right, so result string, every time through the um, submit button, every turn, the result string is growing, which let's, um, you don't need to do it. This is more of a demonstration. I'm gonna console log result string every time. Um, every time. I go through this or every turn and okay, result string has uh, just the first um, answer. I go to the second one and it then has two answers. I go to the third one and it has the three. And so at the end of the third turn, this string ha is almost completely populated, but um, it's sort of like the running total. That is how this uh, like constant repeat um, or like replacing the variable with what it used to be followed by some more stuff um, each time. So result string is our output. The problem is, oh, we do already have it there. 
Does yours already say result string? Open, close quotes. That's strange because they didn't give us one called result string. I think this is supposed to be called result string originally. Oh, this is frustrating. Okay. Um, so we are just working through this essentially in order. We're checking the user's guess, guess against the correct answer. We have our result string is keeps keeps gathering. We have uh, this is resetting the input. So on the next turn, you know, the text isn't still there. We are updating the turn number so that it is showing the next question or going to the results screen if it's already turn four. And I think at this point, the quiz should work. We do have one more conditional string to do or conditional branch tree situation uh, to give the user a unique output based on their score. But I think this should work as far as having a um, some correct thumbs up and thumbs down. Um, let's go. And last one, yeah. Okay, so at this point, it should be able to check whether or not the user got the correct answer. And the last stage is to, is it this one? No, it's not this one. Is it this one? It's not this one. Is it this one? Yeah. The last stage is to have a special output text based on their score, okay? Which needs to be, only needs to be set at the end. Um, okay, we are setting, well, what's interesting is we are setting this text to result screen every turn. We just can't see it because we're because we're not on the result screen. And we can do the same thing with um, our output text. So we need a new series of conditionals that will judge the user's score. So let's get an if, else if, else, else if, else if, else if situation. Um, so score double equals four, we'll have an output string and so on. Um, and I'll, no, wait, I need two equal signs. There you go. If you get the purple one in there, you are missing an equal sign. And so we have score four, score three. If score double equals two, and we need a one and a zero. Uh, double equals one. And actually, I mean, we don't need a zero. We just need a path for it. And this is going to change what final message is. So let's, do we have, we've already declared final message somewhere. Yeah, so final message is its own variable that again gets wiped here on the result screen. Uh, so we're just gonna reassign final message to um, a series of, you know, positive affirmations or good job, um, or maybe uh, what did I do? And let's see here, perfect. Um, trying to do perfect, I don't know. Just a few different things, original, um, score, not bad. You can look at the um, examples 
from the example where it has like uh, emojis are hard. Better luck next time. Your call, as long as they make sense. And I'm going to put punctuation in here because you'll see in a second why. Um, try harder. Um, how about just give up? Okay, so we have our final message. We're going to set final message text to whatever that is. But I would like to add um, before that, I'd like to concat like their score so that they can actually see the score. Um, although even though they could do the math, it's another opportunity to program some concatting. So let's do um, I don't know. Like how about I don't know, something that makes sense. You got a um, although I mean we could just do let's just do it this way. Let's have final message um update and collect here so we'll have final message we will reassign final message to be whatever it was before no it's not doing that final message is um final message is getting yeah we'll just do whatever it is at this point which is one of these phrases um, uh, final message plus, um, I mean, you can rearrange this however you want to make a sentence. Let's do score, um, score is how many they got plus, um, out of four, we know it's four, we don't need a variable for that. We can hard code it, uh, score out of four, um, then period, and then um, plus, okay? So final message is being reassign reassigned, whatever the score is, followed by out of, followed by whatever messages at this point and then we're setting the text to final message let's see what happens run star quiz dup 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 zero to four just go up. um i would like i think a new line looks good there so inside of the string remember new line command needs to be inside of a string even if it's there by itself in this case it's not it's got some other friends Please tell me my friends. Yeah, there we go. And now we get to the end, and it says zero to four. Just give up. Um, I don't know. Let's uh, and all this fine tuning of punctuation and uh, phrasing and whatever is that's up to you. But I think we've got everything here. Okay, let's go, how about Batman? Let's test some case sensitivity. Um, I think it'd be nice to add a um, feature where, well, I don't, mm, I don't know. Like I said, you can mess around with punctuation and maybe you want three slash four. I mean, score, regular slash four. And this is starting to look like this is what regular expressions look like. I don't know if you told you about those, how you parse um, strings to like dig things out of them. Um, but there you go. There's that. Um, would be nice if the result string which is this the main stuff here had a um like what they guessed versus what the correct answer is 
but that would get kind of crowded and kind of messy. And I think we're good here. I would have liked if they had designed this project where they left you the challenge of resetting things, like this skill of having things reset when you click a reset button is very useful. And, um, you know, setting things to an empty string is how you wipe a string. And setting score and turn back to one is required in order for the game to work. Uh, yes, when I test your stuff, I want to make sure that everything gets wiped each time. So one out of four, try harder. And without hitting reset, um, I'll try to get a zero out of four. Yeah. And without hitting reset, let's try again. Batman. And then two out of four. Okay. So that will be, that's considered a successful app if you can have it go through multiple times with having the correct answer. Okay. I'll do a quick scroll through this for the sake of the video. Um, and then I'll do it in text mode also if things don't quite make sense. Uh, does that go down a whole thing? I'll try to do it by chunks. And again, the more you keep your lines lined up with mine, the better off you'll be for debugging purposes. Um, and feel free to go through and get rid of these um, comments. I don't think they do a good job. Okay. So that is it for instruction, or at least for the recording.